So good evening. Have a seat nice and tall on your mat. Easy seated pose is where we're gonna start. And tonight I have a nice cooling and grounding yoga practice in store for us. So we really will be low to the ground and breathing deeply, right? Tuning into those deep breaths, really allowing your breath sound to fill, to empty, and those things are, those phases are complete. And when we tap into that kind of breathing, that fulfilling breathing, our body starts to relax, right? The, the moment we start to just slow down and tune in, our body starts to ah. So allow yourself to have that ah, into your seat to surrender your base to the ground, to just let it unfurl and center your spine, grow a little taller in your seat. And maybe we become even more mindful, more space for our breath to move through our midsection, through our rib cage. I fill up your rib cage space with some deep, cool breaths. Notice where you might have brought a little tension to the mat with you tonight. We're going to, again, tune in, slow down, cool off a little, and allow our tension to melt. Let's see if we can do that together tonight. So if you're just arriving, we're sitting on our mat comfortably cross-legged, Sukhasana, easy seated pose. We're sitting tall and we're breathing deeply. Arriving into our bodies a little more fully and arriving for our practice. Now, take your arms, and I'm gonna call them genie arms for tonight, and we're gonna bent arms stacked and, you know, clasp gently towards the nooks of the elbows there. Just notice if the shoulders are feeling particularly tight. We're moving, rotating side to side. And you could start to, you know, Jeannie rising out of the bottle with your arms, with your spine. And coming back down into that starting position, centered right in front of the chest and then rotating side to side. Right, that corkscrewing action. And let's let ourselves come back to center and arms release towards the ground. Good job with that one. Slowly start to circle through our spine one direction and lean back. Allow the stretches to happen as you draw those spinal circles smoothly, still filling your body, breathing deeply. Let's change direction smoothly. And back to center. Let's reach arms up to the sky and let's do the little genie clasp again here. Little side to side bending. Let's 
centering and allowing your arms to just spill out to the sides of you. Checking in again in your easy seated pose. Centered, tall, breathing deeply. So we've, we've worked on arms and these arm positions, they're important for tonight because a lot of our practice will ultimately be done on our backs, reclining. So just remember arm positions. Genie arms, genie clasp, right? And genie arms are right in front of your chest or they're gonna be up above your head. And notice you can move away from the crook of the elbow and just grab a forearm or hand to wrist. Whatever's, whatever you can grasp that's most comfortable when you go up. Arms release, fall to your sides. Okay, one more. Hands back behind, clasping hands, if you can. I'm gonna fold forward so you can see what my arms are doing. Squeezing the space between the shoulder blades, activating those gorgeous postural muscles at the mid back. <sighs> Activating our arm muscles for sure. Lengthening through spine, arms, and expanding across our chest. You can also feel the stretch through your hips. Let's take a few more deep breaths. So right then, we were working with our hands bound behind position. Again, just put that one in your memory bank. We're going to use it again. Next, we're going to do little puppy pose, or your option could be child's pose. So you get to pick what feels better for you. I'm going to start with child's pose, and it'll have a low bottom. Your heart sinks towards the ground and the center of forehead rests. So child's pose or balasana is low. And in puppy pose, extended puppy pose, your bottom is a little more risen. You're still dropping onto your heart, arms extended, but you're also finding comfort on your chin. So we're engaging some really awesome key actions of yoga in the puppy pose and child's pose, but just to different degrees of intensity. So dial it back to the place that felt good so you can feel the key actions transpiring. And let's just talk about the first key action, breathing. Make sure you're breathing in your pose and your heart chest space at the front is sinking softly. You can feel a stretch through your shoulders and through your spine and arms. And now take three more deep breaths as you continue feeling all those glorious key actions happening in your body. And then we peel ourselves up out of our puppy pose. We're on all fours or our tabletop position. And we'll let our knees just glide, bent legs. Bent legs are sliding outward. So there's two external rotations happening at your hips. And your inner groins and thighs are kind of spreading across the floor in a stretch. Your hockey goalie stretch. In yoga, we call this frog pose. This could be a lot of stretch that you're experiencing here. Enjoy, stay balanced and steady, but maybe you're 
wanting to drop down a little deeper towards the ground. Next step might be dropping to your elbows, forearm balance. Or maybe you're even feeling a little more flexible, a little more melty in the chest and chin rest on the ground. Notice I said maybe quite a few times there, so honor your body, do what feels right. Let's slowly peel ourselves up out of that deep stretch, coming back to that centered tabletop steady position. Now let's draw out a few cats and cows. It's a nice flow, awakening the spine from tail to top. Cow pose is when you're looking forward, expanding across the chest. Cow Cat pose happens when you're curling in, pubic bone towards your forehead, crown down. Draw those shapes a few more times. In fact, please keep moving your cats and cows. Keep moving and breathing. And exhale draws the cat. Inhale draws the cow shape. And together they create a spinal flow called Chakra Vakasana. It's a really good feeling. Enjoy. And now we've come back to tabletop position. I said earlier that we do a lot of this practice lying on our backs. So we are going to move onto our backs. And when I lie back, I'm going to have my back to you for a moment. But uh, this is going to give you a better shot of what my legs are doing. So as you lie back, right, legs are bent, feet flat. Right leg crosses the left like a figure four. Just take a moment to relax your body back into the ground as you maintain that cross leg position. Now let's lift the left heel up and give our left hamstring, right, the back of the thigh, a hug. We're in reclining pigeon pose. Yes, you're hugging your left hamstring. Your left leg is bent and tucking in towards you but still allow your back body, your tail, the base of your skull to rest on the ground. Now release your hug of leg and your left foot touches back down to the ground. We're still in the cross-legged position. Arms relax again, a little further away from your body. And allow your legs, your hips to just rock, a little rock side to side. And we're gonna rock our figure four to the right and rest our legs. If keeping 
the right heel on the left thigh is really hard, you can relax it. Relax the right foot to the ground or maintain the crossed leg, what's most comfortable. And then the next piece is genie arms, right? Genie grip above head, resting arms on the ground. So I'm here, our legs are resting to the right, maintaining leg cross if possible, relaxing our genie clasped grip and shoulders back into the ground. Now let's move, rotate slowly, legs lift, and roll the other direction. My right footprint touches down to the ground, but I'm still rolling my right leg back. The outer thigh is really rolling back, keeping external rotation intact. One more long, deep breath. And then we'll rotate the legs back to center, that starting position, and arms relax or flow out to the sides of the body. Let's change sides. So right foot on the ground, left leg crosses with that figure four style gap there, allowing your back body to rest on the ground, the base of the spine, right, your tail and the base of the skull. And engaging the reclining pigeon pose, lifting your right foot from the ground, right hamstring being held. Okay, we'll release holding leg and rotate hips, arms relax. And our twist is going to the left first. And then we'll add our genie clasp, resting genie clasp, shoulders relax back. All right, let's mindfully, thoughtfully roll the legs to the right. Your left footprint touches down to the ground and we externally rotate, pressing the left thigh away. One more long, deep breath. 
and we'll roll legs back to center to our start position. All right, release the arms, let them flow out to your sits. And we'll give legs a hug, knees to chest pose. Good work. Now, right leg straight up to the sky. Left leg, external rotation. And I'm going to place my left inner foot, my own inner thigh. So, oh, we're making tree legs. Now I'm going to lower my tree legs to the ground and rest. Rest as evenly as possible. And your arms, they're your branches, your reclining tree. Your branches get to be however they need to be to be even, evenly rested. Currently, my arms are expanded. This feels great. But it also might feel good to connect hands, right? extended arms. Or maybe tonight you discovered the bent arm, the genie grip, for the first time and, enjoy, and, and are enjoying that right on. Let your breaths be complete, cooling, relaxing. Replenishing. Now releasing arms, bringing ourselves back, knees to chest pose. Hug your legs. Bent legs are being hugged, of course. Now left leg extends upward to the sky. Right leg externally rotates, right? We're creating that figure four or tree shape. And let your tree legs fall to the ground. Trees resting, reclining. Let your branches grow evenly as you breathe deeply. Maintaining a sense of hip neutrality. come back to knees to chest pose and then we'll go ahead and feet to ground building a bridge lift your hips feel free to clasp your hands and press back through shoulders and arms into ground sorry there's someone hammering outside so I'm sure closing the door. So bridge pose, hips lifting, filling your belly, ribs, and chest quite actively with the deep breaths you're taking. There's a great sense of balance, stability, Slowly release, dissolve your 
bottom bridge comes down to the ground bottom touches down now feet together knees so we're getting external in our hips arms could be flowing out expanding out to sides or again maybe you're digging the genie clasp this evening pick your arm position and breathe deeply please in our reclining bound angle pose One more deep breath. And we'll release our arms, bring our thighs back together, give a little squeeze, some closure there, and straight legs to the sky. I'm going to use my hands to hold right hamstring again, and left foot returns to the ground, bent leg. Right leg straightening upward, left bent leg, foot rested, steady. We're generating a stretch through our right leg. And you might also be feeling a bit of a stretch through your low back, through your mid back, maybe even across the back of the shoulder blades. All right, so right straight leg is now going to figure four again. And we're coming back to our reclining pigeon pose. Clasping left hamstring. Now, as I'm holding on here in my reclining pigeon, I'm gonna start my rocking. As I'm holding my leg, I'm rocking or rotating through the hips right to left. And I'm gonna release to the right, legs roll right. Arms find a comfortable position, expanded, relaxed, or relaxed genie clasp. And now a slow roll of the legs to the left. Right footprint touches down to ground and we externally rotate through the right leg and kind of peeling it back. Shoulders, don't let them peel up from the ground though. Lay them down, breathe deep. One more long deep breath and smoothly roll legs back to the starting position. Relax your arms. And now we're going to change sides.
actually, before we cross, we're going to go left leg to the sky, please. Extended left leg upward. Hamstring. Hamstring hold. And how we hold the leg, how we assist the leg in the stretch. It matters. It helps to promote the stretch gently. Still aware that the base of your tail and the base of your skull, those two endpoints of the spine, are plugged into the ground. Now, left leg can take the figure four. We're positioning ourselves for our reclining pigeon pose. So right foot lifting, holding on to the right hamstring. Breathing deeply. Feel free to add the movement that rotating, rocking right to left. And then we're gonna let everything roll to the left. Arms relax back, expanded arms. Or genie clasp. Relax your genie class. All right, now now. A smooth roll to the right. Your left footprint touches down to the ground and we peel the left leg back into external rotation. Check in that your shoulders aren't peeling up from the ground. Lay them back down as closely as you can. And smoothly we roll back to our start position. Relax your arms. And we'll give both knees a hug. Right knees to chest pose, please. Hang on to your right leg, right knee to chest. Left leg, let it just dissolve into the ground. Extend, rest, continuing to remain mindful of those two plug-in points at the end of the spinal spectrum, right? The end of the spinal chain, the tip of your tail, the bottom, and the base of your skull, the top. Now let's gather in both legs again, knees to chest, a big hug. Hang on to your left leg. Let your right leg melt back into the ground. And breathe deeply.
Now let's smoothly just change legs. Lay down the left, hug the right. Allowing those cooling deep breaths to move through your body. Remaining mindful of those plug-in points in the spine, the base of the spine at the tail and the base of your skull. As smoothly as possible, change legs so now you're hugging left knee to chest again relaxing your back body into the ground beneath you and feeling all of the winds of your breath all of those vayu energies moving within you circulating All right, footprints on the ground, knees bent, feet flat. We're gonna build another bridge pose, elevating our middle, our bottom up from the ground. Shoulders stand back. Just focus on those deeply filling breaths. One more long deep breath in your bridge and then we'll release. Knees, let them gently fall apart. Legs fading into this external rotation again. Footprints together as apart. Reclining butterfly pose. Supta Baddha Konasana. All right, friends, let's close the butterflies, wings, knees together. Please lift your heels up so bent legs are lifted. Your arms comfortably positioned on the sides of your body, resting, resting, of course, rest your shoulders. Now, bent legs, remember we were rotating earlier through the hips, kind of rolling right to left. We're gonna continue with that bent legs roll to your left. Let your bent legs rest heavily. My left hand lying gently on my outer right thigh, but of course my shoulder and elbow rest as well. Right arm, I'm gonna extend up along the ground. Allowing the breath and stretch to transpire down the right side of the body so clearly.
Now as smoothly as we can, let's lift legs back to center. Roll bent legs to the right. Right hand gently rests on outer left thigh. Left arm extends up along the ground above you. Tuning in and feeling your breath and the stretch moving along the side, left side of your body. Let's use this one again. Smoothly lift legs and shift them to the left. Right arm extends along the ground. Resting right arm on the ground. Resting shoulders back on the ground. Now smoothly changing sides, legs rotate over to the right. Left arm extends up along the ground. Continuing to apply those gorgeously filling 360 degree breaths. Smoothly bring your legs back to center. Bent legs, give them a big hug. And as you hug your legs, you're still relaxing your back into the ground. You're still relaxing your back pockets in the ground as you continue to hug your legs and breathe. Breathing into 360 degrees, even though you're all coiled up. Maybe you want to coil in even farther by lifting your head and shoulders from the ground, coiling into the nodless position as you lie back. And then completely relax your body. Let your bottom rest. Let your shoulders rest and the shoulders rest broadly. Arms rest widely. There's a sense of direction within you as you lie on the ground. You're lengthening along the mat and you're expanding across the ground, across the mat. And you've just really placed your body well. You laid yourself out and given your breath better direction. Feel the flow within you happening.
continuing to tap in, tune into those deep breaths. As you're breathing deeply, feeling the power of this pause. May you create more moments, more time to pause and check in with your body. It's good for you. It's self-care. And it's simple. As each exhale falls away from the body, notice that your tension falls away as well. Enjoy the release. And now slowly, soft movements start to move through fingers, through toes, through your hips, through your ribs and shoulders. Making those movements that awaken you and draw you back to the surface again. Thank you so much for practicing with me tonight. Namaste, yogis. Hope to see you again soon.